The Witcher Old World is a competitive adventure board game with deck building elements for one to five players. In a moment you will see how to prepare the gameplay of this board game. In this video I will also introduce you to its rules. In addition, in the description below you will find contents to help you navigate through this video tutorial. Start preparing the game by laying out the board, mostly depicting a map and having space for cards of each type. Speaking of cards, shuffle all 90 action cards and making a deck of action cards. This will be the deck available to all players. After shuffling the cards, place the pool of action cards on the board in the place designed for them. Now create a pool of face-up action cards from these cards by drawing cards from the deck. On the first three spaces from the right, randomly place three cards with a cost of zero. So to do this, draw from the common deck action cards until you discover three cards with a cost of zero. Place them in a random order of the first three spaces on the action card track. All remaining cards uncovered during this action, each with a cost higher than zero, should be shuffled back into the common deck of action cards. Then complete the remaining three spaces of the track by revealing three action cards from the top of the common action card pool. During gameplay, players will purchase action cards from this track, paying the appropriate cost for them and enrich their decks in the process. Place the deck of potion cards at the end of the track of face-up action cards, I mean in the designed place for potion cards, having previously shuffled all 28 potion cards to forming a pile. Now the trophy cards, for which you have also designed a place next to the board. Day preparation varies slightly depending on the number of players. For a 2- and 3-player game, choose one trophy card assigned to each attributes, I mean combat, defense, alchemy and special ability. Place the cards face down next to the board. The following cards form an event deck, which cannot be shuffled. Arrange the cards in ascending order according to the numbers shown or their reverses in the space on the board designed for this deck. Next to it is a space for two exploration cards. Shuffle the 36 Wilderness exploration card and place them next to the event cards. Do the same with the deck of city exploration cards consisting of 36 cards. Shuffle them and place face down pile of cards on the board next to the Wilderness exploration card deck. Place all gold tokens next to the board within reach of all players. They constitute a bank. Regardless of the color, each token is one gold. Prepare two sets of dice for the dice poker game. Now separate the area tokens into three piles in terms of type of terrain, I mean mountain, water and forest, and place them in cover piles next to the board. Then select and reveal one token of each type for each of the three spaces in the monster section on the board. They will indicate the exact location when monster will appear on the map at the beginning of the game. So, the monsters. Start with the cards you need to divide into three piles in terms of their level. This is the number shown on the right side of each monster card. There are a total of 28 such cards in three levels in the game. Next, match the stack of monster token to each deck. Sort them beforehand into three groups according to the level shown on the reverse side and place them next to the cards. Now select all allocate randomly to the three locations, one uncovered monster token each. And here, a small difference depending on the number of players. In a two-player game, reveal two level 1 monster token and one level 2 monster token. Otherwise, uncover and assign three level 1 monster tokens. Then, place the card of the corresponding monster on the space below the area tokens in the monster section of the board. At the bottom of each card is described the special ability of each creature, as well as specific levels Difficulty on the right, life on the left side of the card. Familiarize yourself with their abilities. 
So now collect monster token from the monster section and place each monster token in the appropriate location. If you have a deluxe version of this board game, set up the corresponding monster miniature in the location indicated by the area tokens. At the end of the preparations related to monsters, shuffle all 20 monster fight cards and form a deck from them. Then place it next to the game board within the reach of all players. The stage of preparing the game board and common components is over. The person sitting to the right of the first player starts and that becomes the player who has recently read the Witcher book or choose him in any other way. So the first player's neighborhood shuffles the covered Witcher board so that he can see them and draws two boards. He then chosen one of them and places it in front of him. This is a Witcher he will play with. The unselected board returns to the pot and the next player draws his Witcher as the same way. The first player makes the choice last. You can also assign Witcher characters in any other way you like. Now each player draws a wooden marker and a reputation token of the appropriate color. All players place their Witcher's reputation token on the first lower space on the reputation track on the board. The player who first reaches the fourth higher level on the reputation track will immediately win the game. Place the five wooden markers in the color of the Witcher's skull on the lowest space on the Witcher's level track and on the tracks of all four attributes. That is the Witcher's combat, defense, alchemy and special ability. Place the shield marker on the second from the bottom space of the track of the character board, on par with the other markers next to the attribute tracks. Now the trophy cards assigned to the Witcher skull. Each player will have four trophy cards with the symbols of their Witcher skull on their reverses. Now each player draws as many of these trophy cards as the number of his opponents. I mean, in a four-player game, he will draw three cards. He slides them, covered under the top edge of his Witcher's board. So now it's time to display the hero miniature. Choose the right one and mark it by attaching a stand in the color assigned to the miniature. Then place your hero figurine on the map in the school area of this Witcher. This is his starting location. Next, each player reaches to the appropriate, I mean Witcher school marker deck of 10 starting action cards. He shuffled all the cards and create his starting deck of action cards from them. Place the face down pile of cards of the left side of the Witcher board. Each player also draws double-sided help cards and place them next to his character board. Now each player in turn draws starting gold tokens and action cards from their decks. The number of this will vary depending on the game. For example, in a two-player game, the first player draws two gold tokens and three cards from his deck. The second player will reach for four gold tokens and draw five action cards for his hand. The exact number of starting resources and cards for players in different gameplay variants is indicated on page 8 in the rulebook. This concludes the preparation stage for the game. To be the winner, your Witcher must be the first to reach the fourth highest reputation level. It will increase when you earn a trophy card, whether it's another Witcher or a monster you defeated, but also by reaching the fifth highest level of any attribute. So now, listen to how to do this. During the game players, starting with the first player in turn clockwise, play their turns. A player's turn is divided into three phases, played one by one. The first, in which you perform movement, that is your Witcher moves to adjacent location and you can play various actions, I mean reactions or complete tasks. 
Second phase, which involves fighting with monsters or between two witchers, exploration of areas by discovering exploration cards, or meditation when you meet its conditions. Finally, phase three, which consists of drawing cards and the mandatory purchase of action cards. All three phases, as a reminder, are marked on the top of the board. I mean, phase one in the map section, phase two in the area of monster cards, exploration and event cards, and phase three in the area of the action card track. So now hear about each of the phases in more detail. I will start with phase one, which is movement and actions. At the beginning of this phase, each player must perform a move and after that optional area or task actions. You can also choose not to perform a move action and go straight to playing phase two. In order to make a move, I mean move the Witcher figurine to an adjacent area, that is the location connected by a road, the player must discard an action card from his hand with a symbol matching on the one of the area he wants to go to. You also can discard an action card with a universal terrain symbol, I mean wild icon. After playing the movement cost, the player can move his Witcher figurine. In addition, you can pay for the movement action by discarding any two action cards or you can discard any action card and discard one gold token to move your Witcher miniature to any selected adjacent area. Remember that you may move to a location that has any number of opponent and monster miniatures or tokens already there. However, when performing a movement action, you cannot skip an area and move to an area further away. Note that some areas on the map are connected by a water path. Moving around them is done in the same way as on the mindland. In the first phase, in addition to the mandatory move action, you can perform any number of actions like location action, resolve quest or dice poker game with another Witcher. Now listen with more detail about location actions. At two locations with such a symbol, you can play dice poker with local citizen. So first of all, deposit two gold tokens uh, taken from the bank into the poker pot and then add one gold token from your resources. Take one dice pool and let the player to your right take the other. After playing, you remember that if you win, take three gold tokens from the poker pot. This is your prize. Now let's move on. Each Witcher has an area of his Witcher school with four symbols on the map. When performing actions here, select one of the attributes whose level you want to rise. The cost is gold of value equal to the current level of attribute plus one gold. Then move the marker of the Witcher board one space up to the track of a given attribute. If you are taking that action in your school, you may choose to train your speciality instead of three attributes, I mean combat, defense or alchemy. And now a few more words about rising the level of the Witcher. On the Witcher board, there are four attribute tracks. The first three attributes from the left, I mean combat, defense and alchemy, appears on all boards. The last fourth attribute is a unique special ability assigned to the Witcher school. Each Witcher has a different special ability. After all of your attribute marks are rise above your current Witcher level, you immediately level up to the next level. When you level up to level 2 or 3, immediately draw one card from your action deck. When you level up to level 4 or 5, immediately draw two cards from your action deck. To mark this, move the marker higher on the level track. Importantly, remember that when performing a location action in your turn, you can only perform each action once. So if you start the game in your starting location, I mean in your Witcher school, in order to perform the location action here, you must first make a mandatory move, I mean go to adjacent location, then return to it, and only then can you perform the location action. 
Remember that when playing the first phase, you can also not perform the mandatory move action as well as no other actions and then you will immediately consider the second phase. But I will tell you about it later in this video. Now I'm going to talk about the actions of various locations. At three locations with this symbol, active player can draw one potion from the top of the potion deck. Potions are kept face up near or below player's board. During the gameplay you can have a limit of four potion cards, which is reminded by a sign of the witcher's board. If you exceed the limit of four potions, discard any chosen potion or potions down to four. In that location, the player may trash one chosen card from their hand and gain one card from the six cards available on the game board. The printed cost of the newly gained card may be lower, the same or one higher than the cost of the trashed card. The players add the newly gained card to their hand. In a location with such symbols, you can get rich if you do not have gold tokens in your resources. Also, you may trash one or two action cards from the six available on the pool on the game board. After doing so, the available action cards are moved to the right and the pool is replenished from the common action card deck. At this location, you may gain one level of the indicated attribute only if that attribute's level is equal to or lower than your Witcher level. On the Old World game board, you can find two locations where you can ask local people for information about the monsters. But first, you get one gold. Then you choose one monster that you wish to track. Now, you get a train token from the pile that the monster is currently occupying. Place this token face up on the player board with a location shown and place one gold token from the bank on it. It's called a trail quest. Remember that it cannot be the same location that you are currently at. In that case, you draw another token. Now that I've mentioned the task action, hear more about the task action, which is in addition to the location action, you can optionally perform in the first phase. Now I've mentioned the task action, hear more about the task action, which is additional to the location action, you can optionally perform in the first phase. So by exploring the map of the old world, which I will describe to you in more detail in a moment, you will draw exploration cards. On the cards, there are two types of results, immediately and tasks. The task itself can be for a specific location like Glenmore or Sintra, or for areas of a particular type like water or mountain terrain. So when the word quest is on the taken exploration card, place the card face up on the right side of your witcher's board. Then place the corresponding matching token of that area on that card. Such an expiration card with a token will lie next to your board until you complete this task. So how should the task be performed? When a player as part of moving around the board moves to the location indicated in the task, in this example to the Glenmore area, on the card of the task being performed, the number of the event card is indicated. Now the player sitting to the right of the active player draw an event card with the number indicated on the expiration card. In the game you can expect several types of event cards. One will provide two options to choose from. On others you will perform a test in the form of rolling dice. Another type of event card may trigger a short combat or provide equipment and even a companion. When the task on the card is completed, shuffle the token into the appropriate token pile and put the expiration card back into the box. Remember that you can have any number of expiration cards with tasks during the game.
dice poker can re-roll all of part of his dice. When he does, it's time to the active player to roll his chosen dice as well. In the next step, players compare the results of both players to determine the winner. In the case of tie, that is when both players have the same result, for example, pairs, the players with higher values wins. If two players has the same results with the same values, the player with highest values on non-used dice wins. If still tied, compare the second highest value on not used die. If still tied, the active players wins. And when the excitement subsides after the game, I just remind you that you can't find this Witcher in the second phase on this turn. Summary of the first phase. Movement and actions. After performing the mandatory movement action, that is discarding an action card and moving the Witcher figurine to an adjacent location, you can perform actions in any order, such as location or quest actions or playing dice poker with another Witcher. But you can also leave the action cards you have in your hand, discard none and skip the mandatory move and perform no other actions and consider the second phase. During phase 2, you must choose to do one of the following action. Fight, meditate or explore. Listen now with detail about each of them. Let me start with the fight. When the Witcher is in the same location as the monster, he can fight it. The player sitting to the right of the active player controls this monster. As you can see, at the bottom of the monster card, the special ability of this monster is described. On the right side, its level is specified, and on the left side, you see the life points, that is, how many cards the deck of this monster will consist of. So before the battle begins, the player controlling the monster draw cards from the monster fight card deck in the amount indicated by the creature's life level. In the example I'm showing you now, the player controlling the monster must draw 13 cards from the deck. The cards should be shuffled to form a covered pile and placed next to the board. If the active player has a monster trail token for that monster, they take the first turn during this fight. Otherwise, the monster take the first turn. I was told you about the trail tokens in more detail a little aerial in this video. The active player, I mean the attacking Witcher, keeps the cards that are in his hand. Do not discard any of them. You do not draw additional cards at the beginning of a fight, unless another rules explicitly say so. Now you have created your life pool deck. Take your entire action deck and the discarded action cards, combine them and shuffle all together. This is your life pool deck. Place them next to your Witcher board. The cards of this deck represent your remaining life. Once your life pool deck runs out and you discard, I mean play your last in hand card, you are knocked out and that means opponent immediately wins the fight. So if you have a track tokens of this monster, your Witcher will start by playing the cards he has in his hand. From then on the Witcher and the monster will play their turns one by one until the monster knock down the Witcher or the Witcher knocks down the monster. You play action cards as a combination, playing one card or combining several cards together. In the combination, it is important that the card play on the top is paired with an extension of the same color on the card underneath. In this example, the purple card on the top connects to the purple extension on the card underneath. This combination has both attack symbols active, so by playing cards like this, you will deal 2 damage to the monster. To inflict wounds on a monster is to discard to the top cards from the monster's life deck in an amount equal to the number of wounds. So in this case, you have to discard 2 cards. Now see another example of playing cards in a longer combination. So, you play the purple card first, 
It has four extensions that allow you to play a card in the one of the four colors on it. So the second card you play is green and connects to the green extension on the card below it. Now two shield symbols are activated. This card has a purple extension. This means that only a purple action card can be played on it. So in this case, four attack symbols are activated. The purple played card has four color of extension. The last action card played to this combination is a red card, matching the red extension from the previous card. Once the combination of cards is played, it must be proceed, which means assign damage to the enemy. So now, count all active attack symbols in your combination. Your opponent will receive as much damage as the sum of these active symbols. In this example, the enemy will receive 6 wounds. Now the player controlling the monster must discard 6 cards from the monster's life deck. In a situation where this deck is exhausted, it means that the monster has been defeated. Now check if there are active shield symbols in your combination of action cards. If so, you can raise the level of your shield on the Witcher board by as many space as you have active symbols in the combination. But remember that the level of the Witcher's shield cannot be higher than the level of defense. So in this situation, I can only raise the shield level by one space that is equal to the Witcher's defense level. In the next step, consider the active special effect from your combination of action cards. In this example, the effects will modify the number of cards drawn according to the level of my Witcher's combat attribute. This means that in a moment, I will draw not three, but six action cards. After playing a combination of action cards and attacking a monster, the player replenish uh, action cards in his hand at the end of his combat turn according to the following rules. The standard number of action cards you can draw from the deck is determined by your Witcher's combat level. Now add or subtract modifiers from the action cards you played. The final result will tell you how many action cards from the deck into your hand. The limit of cards in a player's hand is 7 cards. So if you have 7 cards in your hand and you need to draw more cards, don't do it. If, while drawing cards, your deck run out, don't shuffle cards from the discard pile. Simply stop the card draw. After playing the Witcher's turn, it's time to play the Monster turn. Now, before the Monster combat card is drawn, each of the non-combat players decide what type of action the monster will make. After choosing whether it will be Church, the symbol of the top of the card, or whether it will be Bite, the effect of the bottom of the card, the player controlling the monster reveals the top card of the monster deck and considers the chosen effect. In this example, a bite would inflict two wounds on the Witcher, but a church would already inflict as many as five. Monster on day cards, in addition to inflict wounds, can force the Witcher to discard random action cards from his hand. Then the active player shuffles his action card in his hand, and the player controlling the monster draws one or two or three cards according to the effect. Another effect from the monster card is to remove action card from the Witcher's hand. In this situation, the Witcher must remove one selected action card from his hand. Yet another possible effect from monster cards is to lower the level of the selected attributes. The active Witcher then moves the marker on the corresponding attribute tracks one space down. Remember that you cannot lower the attribute if it's already at the level 5 or below level 1. And now see another example of considering a player combination of action cards. The top red card provides 3 attack symbols and a minus 1 modifier when drawing cards. On the card below it, a red extension with a special effect is active because it's the same color at the card on the top. In contrast, the red extension on the last card is not active. On this card, 
The green extension is active, provides one attack symbol and connects to the middle green action card with an active defense symbol. And there is another active special effect in this combination on the yellow card. This effect will allow the player to draw the top card from his discard pile. When considering the effect of this special symbol, remove this card from the combination of played action cards back to the player's hand. The action card played by the Witcher to the combination of cards set aside and cover it in an unchanged order in that player's discard pile. In the next step, replenish the card in your hand that is draw as many action cards from your deck as your combo level indicates. Remember to add or subtract modifiers result from the active symbols in the previously played card in the combination. And then you go to the monster's turn again. Players choose the type of its attack. Then the top cards of its live deck is revealed and the previously chosen effect is considered. The fight between the Witcher and the monster can end in one of three ways. Either the Witcher defeats the monster, or the Witcher drives the monster away, or the Witcher loses, I mean the monster wins the combat. Now I will describe all three options and start with the best one, that is when the Witcher defeats the monster, that is his still action cards in his hand or in his action deck, and the monster deck has run out, it means that the monster has been defeated. In such a situation, the Witcher takes that monster card, turns it over, read the description and slide it under his board at the bottom, so that the ability is visible. From now on the Witcher can use it effect. In addition, the Witcher draws two gold tokens from the bank and rises his reputation by one by moving up a marker on the reputation track on the board. Then the player's experiences fatigue means that uh, he must remove from the game the number of cards indicated by the reputation track at the level just exceeded. In this example, it's two cards. You can remove cards from your hand, as well as from the deck of action cards, and also from the discard pile. Removing an action card means putting it back into the box. This card no longer takes part in the game. It's important that you remove exactly as many cards as required, no more or less. When you defeat a monster, its miniature or monster token should be removed to the box. The location token connected to the monster should be shuffled into the appropriate location token pile. Do the same with track tokens as well as track tasks that other players may have. However, do not discard the location tokens that are on the event cards with tasks. So now it's time to choose a new monster to appear on the map. To do this, select a monster token from the pile of monster tokens whose level is one higher than that of the monster just defeated. So if you defeat the monster from level 2, now select the monster token from level 3. Then choose the corresponding card of that monster and place it on the board in the monster section. After that, pick one location token of the same type, I mean in this example from forest token pile. The selected location token will indicate the exact place where a new monster will appear on the map. Place the token of his monster in the location indicated by the token of the area assigned to this monster. The same as you did at the beginning of the game during preparation. If you have a deluxe version of this board game, instead of the monster token, Place the miniature of this monster on the board. Now you know what happens when you defeat a monster. I will tell you what happens when the monster is driven away by you. If the Witcher is knocked down, that is, his deck of action cards run out of cards, and these are less than two cards left in the monster life deck, the monster is driven away. In such a situation, the active player draws two gold tokens from the bank to his resources. Then he puts the repelled monster card back into the discard pile of creature cards next to the board. The monster token 
or its miniature is also set aside by the board. Finally, the active player, I mean the one attacking, takes one action card of his choice with a cost of zero from the game board. Then he puts this card on top of his discard pile. After drawing a card from the pool of face-up action cards from the game board, move the cards to the right and draw a new card from the deck. Placing a new monster on the game board is done in the same way as I just described to you in this video. Now, find out more about what to do in a situation where a Witcher is defeated in a fight with a monster. If it's the Witcher who is knocked down, that is, his action cards have run out, while there are two or more cards left in the monster life deck, the Witcher lose the fight. In this situation, the Witcher takes one track token, that is a location token with the symbol of the terrain on which the monster is located. He then draws one action card with a cost of zero from the pool of face-up action cards on the game board. He puts this card on top of his discard pile. It's important to him to remember that he will draw one less card in this turn in phase three, which I will describe to you in a moment. Another important piece of information for all players is that the next time any Witcher face this monster, that creature will have a full level of its life points. I mean, a full deck of monster life cards. The monster after this battle won and returned to strength. So after the battle with the monster is over, regardless of the outcome, the following steps should be taken. Shuffle all the monster's fight cards and create a new deck from them. Then shuffle together the action cards from your hand, from your deck of action cards and create your new deck of action cards this way. Now raise the level of your Witcher's shield to the level of defense, I mean, in this example, raise the shield to level 3. And with this preparation you will start the third phase of your turn. But I will talk about this in a more detail in a moment. Now listen to what a fight between two Witchers looks like. So when as a result of moving around the map and the exploration the old world, at least two Witchers meet in the same location, these Witchers can fight each other. A fight between two Witchers is not possible in a location of any Witcher school and also when any location has a closed tavern token. The presence of such a token means that this is a location in which a battle between Witchers has already taken place here. You cannot attack a Witcher who is in a location with such a token. The token of the closed tavern will remain in the location until the battle between the Witchers take place in another area and the token of the closed tavern is put there. So before the fight between the Witchers begins, the other players can bet on the outcome. Each player not involved in the fight can place one bet. To do so, the player takes one gold token and only one, not more, and plays it on the selected space in the right upper part of his Witcher board. If you place a gold token on this space, it means that you bet that the attacking player will win the fight. If you choose to place a token on an adjacent space, it means inactive, that is the defending Witcher, will win this combat. In order to place a bet, your Witcher figurine does not have to be in the same location as the fighting Witchers. You have to remember that beating on the results of the battle is optional, that is, you don't have to do it. Of course, in a two-player game, players cannot place bet. I will tell you how the bet should be considered a little later in this tutorial. Now let's get right to describing the fight between the Witchers. Witchers during the combat play out their turns one by one, just as in the case of fighting a monster. So the Witchers play combinations of action cards from their hand. You have already heard how this should be done in the part of this video discussing monster combat. So now listen to how you can use potion cards and special abilities in combat, both when two Witchers are fighting as well as a Witcher with a monster. 
The maximum number of potion cards you can use through the bubble depends on the current alchemy level of your Witcher. As you know, the limit of potion cards for each player is 4 cards, regardless of the level of alchemy. For example, using a Blizzard potion card after playing action cards, you can play one additional action card from your hand and this card does not have to match the extension of the card underneath. After you use the potion card, place it face up next to your Witcher board. When the battle is over, put it back in the common pile of discard potion cards. In addition, during the combat you can use your Witcher's special ability, which is described on the right side at the bottom of a Witcher board. When fighting either another Witcher or a monster, it's a good idea for you to use the effects of equipment cards or trophies you have in your inventory. Importantly, you can use a given effect any number of times and you can do it in any order, unless the content of the card or special ability states otherwise. So after playing a combination of action cards and using any special effects, you must assign damage to the other Witcher. When fighting a Witcher, the damage dealt is always allocated in a specific order. The first for shields, the next for the Witcher's life deck, and finally for the hand. For each wound you have to receive, you must lower your shield level by 1. If your Witcher's shield level is 0 and you have to take damage, discard one card from the top of your life deck to your discard pie for each wound. If your Witcher's life deck is empty and you have to take more wounds, discard one card for your choice from your hand to your discard pile for each wound you receive. If you have no more action cards in your hand, it means that your Witcher has been knocked down and it's your opponent who has won this combat. A fight between two Witchers can end in one of two ways. Either the active, I mean attacking player wins the fight or the inactive Witcher wins the duel. When the active, so attacking player, wins the fight, he wins the trophy card assigned to his opponent's Witcher school. This player takes one trophy card from his opponent, turns the card over, reads the description and slides the trophy card under the bottom edge of his Witcher's board so that the card's ability is visible. Remember that each player can get a maximum of one trophy card from each opponent's Witcher school. When an active player wins a battle, that player takes gold tokens from the bank, the amount of which depends on the reputation level of his defeated opponent. In my example, the blue Witcher lost, so the winner takes two gold tokens. Then the winning Witcher receives his reputation level by 1 and suffers fatigue, I mean remove action cards in the amount indicated by number of the left side of the reputation track on the game board. You can choose the card to discard from your hand, from the pile of life cards or from the pile of discarded cards. In this example, the player must remove 3 action cards. Remember to remove the exactly number of cards required neither less nor more. The type of cards, I mean the color, doesn't not matter when removing them from the game. After the combat won by the attacking player, his opponent, I mean the player who lost the combat, choose one card with a cost of zero from the pool of face-up action cards on the game board and place it on top of his discard pile. Then he shuffles his deck of Witcher life cards and draw three cards from it for his hand. When the defeating Witcher, I mean the inactive player, wins the battle, he gains gold tokens in an amount equal to his opponent's reputation level. So in this example he takes three gold tokens from the bank. Then he shuffles his deck of action cards and draws four cards from it for his hand. However, this player does not get his opponent's trophy card from winning the battle. The player who attacked by lost this combat draw one card with a cost of zero from the pool of face-up action cards on the game board. He puts this card back in his discard pile. This player also draws one less card in the third phase of his turn, which I will tell you about in detail in a moment. After the battle between the two Witchers is over, regardless of the outcome, to the following. Shuffle the action cards you have in your hand, Combine them with cards from the Witcher's life deck and cards from the discard pile. 
This will create your new deck of action cards. In the next step, raise your Witcher's Shield level to the level of his defense attribute. And with this setting, you will be in the third phase of your turn. But before I describe it to you, listen now to how the bets should be considered that the other players made before the fight started. If a player bets his Witcher of one gold on a Witcher who loses the battle, he puts the Witcher's gold token in the bank and thus loses his bet. If the player bet on the Witcher who won the fight, he puts the Witcher's token back into his resources and then draws as many gold tokens from the bank as the combat winner. As part of playing the second phase of your turn, instead of fighting either a Witcher or a monster, you can conduct an exploration of the old world. When you decide to do so, you must decide whether you want to explore the city or the wild dress. Depending on your choice, the player sitting on your right draws the top card from the corresponding exploration deck. Your neighborhood then reads you an introduction and two options to choose from. Importantly, at this stage he cannot read to you or discuss the result below on the event card. Now it's time for your decision, I mean choosing one of two options presented. And here it's important that your neighborhooding player does not read to you the results of the option you didn't choose. After reading and considering the exploration card, put it back in the box. If the result of your choose contains the word task, take this exploration card and select the corresponding location token. Place the token on the card and the card next to the Witcher's board. When your Witcher, performing a movement action, moves to the location on the map required by the task, reach for this task card. It will send you back to the counter event card. Then your adjacent player draws an event card with the corresponding number and reads you the contents of the introduction. I have already introduced you in this video tutorial. The third option you can choose when playing the second phase of your turn, besides combat and exploration, is meditation. It is only possible if certain conditions are met. If your Witcher has reached the 5 highest level of any attribute, such as my example, combat. The trophy card assigned to this attribute must be available, I mean be in the deck of trophy cards next to the board. In addition, your Witcher must not have a card of this attribute in his inventory, I mean under the Witcher's board. So while meditating, select a trophy card assigned to the attribute with the highest level, in my example the combat attribute. Then slide this card under the bottom edge of your Witcher's board. If your Witcher's reputation is less than 3, rise it level by 1 and suffer fatigue, I mean remove from the game the number of action cards indicated by the number of the left next to the reputation track. And finally, very important information related to the meditation action. If by performing the meditation action you gain the winning last level of reputation, you do not increase the level and do not suffer fatigue. You draw a trophy card and can use its ability, but the gameplay is not over. You can only gain the last, fourth and winning reputation levels through combat, not meditation. This concludes the meditation action and you now move on the third phase of your turn. When playing the third phase of your turn, discard enough action cards from your hand into your discard pile to have three or fever cards in your hand. Then draw enough action cards from your hand to have a total of three cards in your hand. If your action deck runs out of the cards while you are drawing, shuffle the cards from your discard pile and create a new draw deck and continue drawing cards. As part of the final step of phase three, you must select one action card from the pool of face up cards on the game board. Once you have selected the card, Pay its cost, which is shown in the lower right corner of each action card. In addition, note that there are modifiers on the first two spaces of the track that increase the cost of the card. On the last space on the track as a modifier that decreases the cost of the card by one. However, remember that the cost of an action card can never be less than zero. So during this action, pick a card from an action card track and pay its cost, if any. Then move the cards to the right side of the track 
and draw a new card from the deck. So if you have to pay the cost of a card, you don't pay it with gold tokens, but by discarding action cards from your hand. The cost shown on the card you buy indicates how many action cards you must discard from your hand to the discard pile. And after shopping, don't forget to move the cards on the action track and draw a new card from the common deck. This will refresh the action card market from the next player. Let me now tell you a few more words about the action cards. There are five types of action cards in the The Witcher Old World board game. Red cards provide a strong attack. The purple ones are offensive cards. Blue cards will provide a quick attack. Dodging will provide you with a green card. And on the yellow ones, expect defensive symbols. In addition, if you have the deluxe version of this board game, each monster token has its counterpart in the form of a miniature. So when fighting a monster, therefore use its miniature instead of a token. The gameplay of the Witcher Old World board game will end immediately when the Witcher of either player reaches the higher fourth level of reputation. Let me just remind you that the game cannot end after the meditation action. Thank you very much for watching this video tutorial. I hope it will be helpful for you during your adventure in the old world. If you like this video, it will be great if you leave a like for me instead of a coin of the Witcher. So now have a great time playing, fighting and exploring. See you in the next video.